Light your decks on fire, kids. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> You've changed, man. Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux game news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone, that's Jordan the Swag, and over there is one Pedro Venteus, together with you, Shed Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron, two canes. Spell two canes, same. Two canes, same. <laughs> what would that character be? Uh, look, it's two cans ham with uh, two canes. <laughs> no, it's, just, you know, two, it's after after, it's after uh, two cans Sam didn't like pay his bills to the mob, so now he's two canes Sam. Oh man, <laughs> I like how we're bringing the mafia into the um, serial universe. I'm down with it. I fully support oh, it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Count, Count Chocula is like the fucking Don. It's like there we go. <laughs> that's good, my boy, dude. Oh, why didn't you give me that Hollow Knight? I know the internet made it up, but I wanted the Dracula bit. <laughs> and I would have watched it. So, there's a long-running joke, which is 100% true, is that it's never DNS. It's always DNS. It's it's a haiku. Yeah, It's right? not DNS. It can't be DNS. It was it DNS. Was DNS. <laughs> and we were fighting with our Jitsi server last week, all throughout the show, because you'll never get the DNS. It, what it was and no one really likes tangoing with that and normally I'm going to say 90% of the time when you do a change for DNS 5 minutes, 10 minutes it gets populated and you're good the reality though is that other 10% of the time where it can legitimately take up to 2 days to get populated correctly now if something gets cached needs to, if, and, the, and the caching server is overriding the TTL, yeah, absolutely. It gets blown out, and you don't know, like because I moved our DNS over to Cloudflare for uh, our Jitsi server. Like, I don't know. I can't. I, I want to mess with it again until it immediately works, but you can't. So, yeah, that, that was my Monday of just, does it work now? Does it work now? Did I do it right? <laughs> I think I did it right. I'm pretty sure I did this right. This is just DNS stuff. I know how to do the C names and A names. And like before I went to bed, man, I was like, are you working yet? I got up the next morning and it was fine. So yeah, don't DNS, not even once. Blame everything else. How about you, Jordan? Because I know earlier in Discord, <laughs> I saw like the pictures of the uh, desktop and Immediately, it's like, oh, you're Two building desktop a new- computers side yeah. by side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe you were building a new PC. No. <laughs> well, I was I was building someone a new PC. Uh, but unfortunately, those uh, B450 motherboards, uh, they don't support those new uh, Ryzen APUs out of the box. And unfortunately, the only other Ryzen CPU I had is in that fucker over there. <laughs> so uh, I had to, in order to update the BIOS, I had to disassemble this computer, take out the CPU, Plug it into that one, reattach all the shit, move the 1080 over as well because I'm I'm flashing an APU system, so I need a GPU for the system to boot, and then do the entire <laughs> fucking process, button everything back up. Uh, in the pre-pre super shows, and we're talking about the the joys of the uh, dark rock, be quiet, dark rock two, and those fucking fan clips. Yeah, that are design, designed by it's Satan himself. Like- <laughs> yeah. Not and, too late, like, you're and, just and, as bad. And they don't, they don't like stay on either. Like if you sneeze on them like slightly, they get out of the hole, and you're like, "Fuck, yeah, yeah, it's it's not good." Well, it's always but, that problem of Pedro's had that too. He's like, you barely touch it, and three of them will just fly right off. If yeah, that last one. <laughs> There's one that's stuck in there, and you need to like to get in with some leverage, like. <laughs> yeah, then you get the bread knife out. <laughs> right. But you, you, and and af- afterwards, there's the whole thing of like uh, like the AMD PSP thing will detect CPU changes or motherboard changes and will prompt you. But when I pl- when I plugged my uh, 3900X back into this computer, little did I know that that message only shows up on one specific output on my 1080, and it was not the output with a matching or it wasn't the output uh, of the monitor that I had upstairs. I needed, I had an HDMI monitor. I needed a, uh, a display port monitor. So I had to haul that shit downstairs, plug it in, realize, Oh, you just want me to press a button. Fuck. All right. Well, I can do that. And, and you know, <laughs> fortunately, Jordan, you, you were able to take a selfie, right? Like, yeah, right <laughs> pr- pr- pretty much. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> That's, oh. It's always good because I'm doing that on a Wednesday. I'm like, man, I got a fucking stream on Thursday. I hope all this shit just. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know those feels. It's like, oh, I, I'm going to do hardware changes. I have until uh, Monday until yeah. I'm like, hmm. That's going to yeah. lot of things. I, I have a four-hour window to make sure this works perfectly. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Speaking of things we need to do, we need to do the horse. Yeah, the horse doesn't take Ryzen CPUs. Uh, unfortunately, it only takes AMD K12s, and we're fresh out of those. It's the Steam So hot. Oh, man. Light your decks on fire, kids. <laughs> Don't... <laughs> You've changed, man. <laughs> With the amount of people that want a Steam Deck, don't. <laughs> Pedro used to be like Dex and Brimstone, but these days, he's just mellowed out. So you might have caught this little bit of news earlier this week. Um, Belly Jelly said, hey, the PCB appears to fit and work fairly well in the Steam Deck. And this was modifying a... Um, what size was it, Pedro? You keep track of these things. Yeah, it's the the Steam Deck only has only supports out of the box the twenty two thirty M dot twos, and with that little plasticky PCB extra thing adapter, you can fit the twenty two forty twos, which are the next size up. The little red thing right there, right? Yep, that's hmm. the uh, little muddy bit. Yeah, but uh, may- maybe you shouldn't do that. Yeah, oh, no, 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 don't. <laughs> Seriously, because uh, the bit that that covers, according to Lawrence Yang, you know, one of the people very much involved with the development of the Steam Deck, it's like, do not do that, because that area is where the charging IC is, and uh, if you remove the thermal pad, like the original post says that you need to remove that thermal pad, um, it that is the one that overheats. That is the one that Gamers Nexus said, if you're playing a video game and you're charging the Steam Deck at the same time, it will get very, very hot. So do not do this. <laughs> Other mods, probably you should be okay. This one, this one's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, messing, messing with the heat transfer and like these embedded tightly packaged systems, that's, that's a good idea, right? Right? Yeah. No. Unless, unless you're going to stick like a mini <laughs> 212 Evo on the back. You're gonna do that case mod, <laughs> but that's 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 gonna change the weight dynamics a little. Yeah, bit. that's going to be a bit chunky. <laughs> what if I want? What, what if I look at the Steam Deck though, Pedro? I'm like, man, the battery life's too good on this. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Wouldn't that see, be an easy way to zap some? Okay, you may get lucky and get one of the nice 2242 SSDs that actually pull a bit less power than the uh, 2230s that are currently available. Probably won't, but um, it is... Same same if you're going to be getting a new Steam Deck 2, right? Yeah. (laughs) The danger (laughs) here is very much the, um, the overheating and, yeah, effectively just getting that teeny tiny chip that's controlling the charging cycles that gets very, very hot and it letting it burn itself up that no don't <laughs> don't do it there you go pro tip now on the topic of ssds and decks yes <laughs> yes well you know you might have paid attention like when you were ordering your steam deck because let's face it this thing is like what four hundred dollars on the low end right mm-hmm. and you've been waiting so what's there to do you go back and look at the specs you're like yeah, yeah same thing we all do when we order something Somebody was keeping track of this. I apologize that uh, this is just where I found it first. Uh, Hardware Lux. Mm-hmm. It's not, not in the, English, uh, but they noticed the, the relevant bit is <laughs> that bit right there is in English. The technical data for <laughs> SSD is on Steam Deck. Uh, no longer, no longer will you get the glorious. What was it originally by? Uh, by four PCIe yeah. Gen three by four, and now so, they're setting yeah. by twos. 256 Sometimes. and 512 gig models will ship with Gen 3 by 2 SSDs. And I, you know, I'm, I want to bet that this came down to Jordan's going to have his own take on this, but probably just like availability because Steam, Steam doesn't need one of something. They need 70,000 or something. And the vendor that could hook him up are like, well, it's not the same. Steam did some tests. I'm like, you know what? It's faster than an SD card. And let's put it in there. And Steam has even come out and said, hey, there's not a speed difference in these, so you need to chill the hell out. Uh, but yeah. I, I want to say this, man. I don't think it's cool to do yeah. stealth 
Oh, even even if the performance is exactly the same, learn something from the SSD manufacturers. <laughs> We've changed things. And even if performance is the same, it's still a nasty taste. When you're it, like, it is. I mean, I mean, my, my theory was sort of along the lines of what Ben was saying. I just thought, like, maybe you got to do what you got to do to, like, preserve whatever profitability margin the Steam Deck has. Like, if they, if they like, to that point, if they, like, ordered X thousand parts at a certain price and then that price went up, they're like, oh... Well, you know, we, we, we have like $300 a unit for these in terms of parts, so we got to like swap that out. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it is very much a shit thing to do without a proper announcement. Okay, yes, they went to the page and changed those to say, okay, you may get a buy two uh, Gen 3 SSD. But they should have said like on one of the announcements, there's plenty of announcements about the Steam Deck, just go... We've had a bit of a shortage of buy four, so you may get a buy two, which is that fine. would require Valve to communicate <laughs> well, honestly no, I was and reading, openly. Though I was reading with the PC World thing just then. <laughs> Apparently, Yang did come back. He's like, "Yeah, we had two vendors, so yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, what, but what the other one had." The yeah. buy two uh, performance difference not going to make that much of a difference or at all when it comes to video Bio games? transfers. Yes, like yeah. game loading times, <laughs> Steam OS loading on boot. No. Because a buy two uh, Gen three uh, link gives you theoretically two gigabits per second, you you're going to be hard pressed to even hit that during yeah. a game. So mm-hmm. down, good down, luck. Down, down, <laughs> download downloading a game, yeah, you're 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 not going to hit yes. that capacity because you're bottlenecked by a fucking Wi-Fi. So yeah, and your CPU because you it's decompressing the game as it's downloading it. So you're fine. And that's it's coming just, from the type of person that adjusts RAM timings. Yes. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it's a console. It is what it is, right? It's It sucks, but it's not the end of the world, I don't think. The, yeah. the, it's just that, yeah, Valve sucks at communicating, so they could have done that better. They're working on it. They are getting well, better. Speaking now, of uh, Valve communication. Something getting better? Yes. Uh, they're actually uh, releasing updates for the Steam Deck nonstop. Ever since uh, it came out, they've been improving things and fixing things that they... Uh, well, maybe we weren't counting on people needing or requiring, like, oh, I don't know, um, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean keyboards for the on to, on, uh, on-screen keyboard. Those are available now. Uh, they're in the client beta, but you can opt into it, and you can actually poke around, and if that is one of the languages that you would much prefer your on-screen keyboard to be, it's available. And uh, there's a couple of smallish uh, other updates, like the uh, they've re-enabled the adaptive backlight feature, which uh, very much ties into the next story. Uh, but yeah, it is a fairly small update, but ones that very appreciated, especially the crashes when it comes to, you know, screenshots and non-Steam game shortcuts. Th- those shouldn't have happened right from the start. Yeah. Um, they, they, they added another couple of fixes for like, uh, apparently native Linux games wouldn't necessarily force quit on the deck. So now they mm. have a proper kill nine implemented. Also, uh, they turned on, uh, gyros and button cords for the, uh, steam deck configurator for the controller. So that's always nice to see. You can have a little more control op- flexibility with the steam deck. I don't, yeah, I don't I mean, know. I, I think it's pretty no, no. Pedro, I want to see you like do a racing game, but like turn on the gyro. So <laughs> With the like, gyro, spin the, yeah. So you have to like spin the deck like a wheel, like. <laughs> yeah, meow. that's why I didn't play racing games on tablets or phones. See, it's like no, no. <laughs> you say that, but the only way you would ever catch me doing something like that if it had like uh, wrist straps, right? Don't uh, yeah. no risk of it. Just oh shit! <laughs> bonk, 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 bonk. <laughs> What's the terminal velocity of a Steam Deck? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 700 are, grams? Yeah, do the math. I, I like the idea of the built-in controller driver, you know, kicking in when you drop out of Steam. That- yeah, this is this is, this is is from uh, the brand new uh, SteamOS 3.3 beta. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 never gonna Valve be a real boy. Count but to three. Valve can count to three. They three put it three. down there three, twice. Three, 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 three. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, thir- thirty-two bit. That that's the three. I don't know. Uh but yeah, the beta OS channel has a bunch of new translations. They added a uh, they added the controller driver so that uh, if you're not running Steam in the desktop mode, you can still interact with the desktop using the controller, uh, which is always very very nice. Um, they also added some better support for external displays and capture cards. Apparently, uh, audio was our dual or stereo audio wasn't working if you plugged in like a USB C dock and like piped it to a, a monitor that had stereo speakers. So that's good. Uh, I guess Steam Deck streaming is a thing. Yeah, if you just like plug your Steam Deck into a capture card, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess I guess that, <laughs> I guess that works. Um, there's a new uh, there's some driver updates as well. Just uh, bringing everything up to speed with the latest and greatest. Have you installed it, Pedro? I have. Uh, I've been running on the betas for a while, and actually, the new version of SteamOS uh, does fix a couple of the issues that I was having with uh, reassigning the controls when you're already playing a game and you just want to use the like the overlay to change the controls on the fly. That was having issues, but that's fixed now. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, no, the um, the like. The driver uh, working without the Steam client having to be running in desktop mode, probably just XPad, but it is uh, it's it's very welcome because they have a very basic uh, in firmware implementation already, where you could only use the right um, trackpad as the mouse, but uh, some people would prefer to use their left hand valve. So thank you. you can use the uh, touch screen. <laughs> yes, that, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, and yeah, it is. Uh, it also has the new version of Mesa um, 22, and you no longer need to disable Wi-Fi power saving in the dev mode settings to stop the wireless uh, constantly disconnecting and reconnecting and disconnecting and reconnecting. That, that took that, them a while that, to push that out. Yeah, that, that, was the, that was the complaint <laughs> that people were having like on release. So. Wi-Fi is hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi on Linux is real hard. You got to install Indus wrapper. You got to like install the Windows drivers. Yeah, and- you got to pull the uh, the end from the Windows drivers. It's annoying. I'm gonna put it like this: well, the latest update, the lineage, like, has caused sporadic crashing in the Wi-Fi of one of my new Samsung tablets. So Wi-Fi is hard, man. Look at it that way. Um, Proton. GE, Glorious Egg Roll. It's a specialized version, not like crazy specialized, but you know, it's latest and greatest. It's stuff you can play with. And before we had Proton Experimental, it was the way that you actually got your hands on it in a nice, convenient, easy way. New version is out, Proton 7-21. A couple of things in this, you know, with Proton fixes and wine. The one that stuck out to me was uh, Fall Guys. Uh, they've disabled E-Sync and F-Sync to prevent random crashes. Remains to be seen. I... <laughs> <laughs> tried that and it it wasn't a clean story but i eventually got back into the game and it worked from there so take that with a grain of chainsaw and i just immediately think was it that was that it just desync is that what was causing it a spike crash uh i don't know i don't know pedro you got some different thoughts on uh ultra wide though right yeah no though because they didn't just release uh Eggie didn't just release 721 uh, he also released 724 which uh comes with a very very big update to the like open source fsr implementation that proton g does which is like the big thing that um at least for my use case, I, I really like the fact that you can just drop that in on your desktop and you can use FSR for everything. And if you have a 32 by 9 or any other weird aspect ratio monitor, now you can create your own um, full screen custom resolutions for your game to FSR from, which is awesome. That is like almost NVIDIA uh, full, uh, the dynamic super resolution, whatever they have on Windows that they never uh, deemed Linux worthy enough to have. Uh, you can actually do that on a per game basis with a turbo uh, ultra wide screen with Proton G724. That's, that's very nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's also a handy guide in that release notes for calculating your own uh, FSR resolutions. Uh, you do have to specify them on as part of the launch option, and you can only set one at a time at the moment. So, mm. um, so yeah, you uh, so if you're gonna, you may need to trial and error to play around with the specific uh, numbers you're gonna get. But still, this is this is uh, really cool. It's it's allowing things to be scaled, run at like lower left resolution, scaled to native, still looks good, makes it. You know, possible to like play Cyberpunk at forty five frames a second. On I the think the biggest TI. challenge in all of yeah. this is going to find an ultra wide monitor that isn't curved. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know this feels because I want one, and like they're all curved, like ridiculously you, you, small you, you, ones. You don't, you don't want you don't, you don't want a giant C on your desk because I know you want that shit in portrait mode. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's at least ten dog. radians for like a nineteen twenty by. 800 like the, the smallest one you can get <laughs> the only way i will accept a curved monitor in my life is if it is like sub 14 inch like 13.5 inch and four by three <laughs> <Then> I, <laughs> just just for the jokes but yeah for an ultra wide monitor i want to use it for a dot and 
like for laying out audio tracks. I don't need we don't need to bring curves in that relationship, maybe. However, something you might consider inviting into the house is fade out underground. It's uh, a classic style third person online multiplayer shooter. So well, it's uh, Team Furries too. Team Fortress 2, damn it. Team Fortress. <laughs> Come on. What they're throwing about is all the characters are very hairy. That's a thing. <laughs> and it, like sort of cell shady type of graphics, very cartoony. Yeah, that that, that looks like yeah. Team Fortress 2. I mean, so, it yeah, doesn't it, look bad. It doesn't yeah. look bad. I um it's you know what? It's free too. Yeah. Yep. Free to play. Free to play. <laughs> Just do a search for Fade Out Underground on Steam. Linux support is there. I went in this so far as the drop down menu for resolution selection was empty. And thank you for attending my review. Uh, that's <laughs> where I uninstalled it. I'm like, that, that tells me a lot about the rest of the game, unfortunately. <laughs> you, you didn't include resolution options in the uh, drop down menu. Mm-hmm. No. That's one of the things that I noticed lately is a lot of games don't give you the resolution options unless you specifically set full screen because they tend to default to. Uh, windowed full screen because windows drag your own um, resolution yeah uh and yeah you have to specifically set it to full screen first and then it gives you the little drop down with the um uh, actual resolutions that you can select that i yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you need just the 64-bit processor and uh nvidia gtx 870 you know what it is free to play and they're not going to blow you up on the um well actually okay the DLCs uh, are the additional content. The uh, soundtrack and cosmetic pass are currently like 99 cents and 49 cents. Um, yeah, I mean, like for, for 99 cents, you get all of the cosmetics. That's pretty good. Yeah, and even then, it's like 10 bucks. Whatever. Who cares? If, if yeah. you like the game, toss them some cash. But no, it's it's, it's, it's good to see. Um, and it's nice to see uh, native Linux support on shooters, yeah, even though yeah. we have a million of them. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's third we're not, person, we're not getting which one. is a little different. <laughs> yep. Uh, but but you, you know you know what game we're not going to get on Linux, Ver- Vermintide Two. Oh. So not uh, anytime this, soon. No. <laughs> so this this comes from the Steam forums. Yeah, you know uh, people have been asking. No, you know Epic Epic and Valve they were working together to release that EAC thing where you can just drop the file in the directory and click a checkbox online. Um, and why why don't why don't you turn this on? And the Vermintide Two developers, Fat Shark, said, "Well, we'd have to rewrite our entire game." And then when we they got linked to the uh, to the literature that says otherwise, they said, "Oh, well, I guess we'll try it." And you know we were watching their uh, repositories on SteamDB. We saw them add the file. It never got pushed out to a public repo, uh, and mm-hmm. apparently it's because it didn't work. Um, so they, they have been, so so they so they claim, or there 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 there, there were issues, uh, and. They were they were working with uh, they were working with Valve they were working with uh, they're working with Epic to try and get it sorted, but according to this they realized hey we have a new game coming out and we don't want to put we don't want to spend effort into getting this shit working so we're just gonna ignore it. But here, here, here here's the thing though like I don't know maybe if you took the time to like understand what was going on and you know fix the issue you would identify it long term so that your future games can work on Proton with easy anti-cheat mm-hmm. they say that that's an easy thing to say and i understand it i feel that especially because this is one of the games that you want to play yes yeah I, I bought i bought this game years ago I, I would really like to play it at some point so um you know to what jordan said they clicked on boxes it didn't work and yeah again to what you said i was like well this is the same person that wrote that eac fanfic from their team, it was like, let me just make up this fantasy world of how EAC works. <laughs> yeah, the- then Valve uh, immediately, like the day after or two right. days after, they released the new like little article saying, "No, uh, that's not how it works. This is how it works." Air full I mean, of bullshit. You kind of wanted to like, yeah, you wanted to be like, <laughs> you're not talking to Windows users. Uh, but, yeah, but, they, they don't want to do what? it. That much is obvious. I okay. wish they'd just hear come me out and say it. Hear me <laughs> out. Say this because I think the best you can always hope for is what they tried. They yeah. clicked the button, didn't work. And they're like, oh, well. Now, the thing is, this is not a new game. This is an older game. They got another game in development. And the thing is, one of these older games, clicking that EAC button or putting in just anything to get it up and running is not really going to result necessarily in more sales since you probably, like Jordan, already own the game. Yeah, um, I already got my money. Yeah. So I, I've got to, like, I, I understand, like, financially, but to what you were saying, you might want to learn how this works if you want to have your next game on deck. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Get, get, <laughs> and if get, you want get to have, 
Yeah, if you had to have the, you know, like the uh, Lytics-y people who already bought the deck because they saw that as a major company going, yeah, all in on Linux and releasing a Linux gaming device and going, yeah, I want to support that. Those people probably not looking at you very positively right now. And and mm. you know and you know here, here's the thing though I actually believe them when they say they, they tried it and it didn't work right like this was always going to be a long shot the fact the fact that like Valve provided some sort of drop in replacement is frankly semi miraculous the fact that it even works in most cases um, like we we never expected that to work right I, so yeah like, I hundred percent believe that but I also believe the person you, who, it, it could tried, be figured out. who tried to make it work was the equivalent of their PR guy. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you could make it work. Absolutely. Like it, it, these. These are not unsolvable problems. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I've said it time and time again for over the last decade. If you don't want to fuck with Linux, it's so much easier. It saves all parties all the time to say we don't want to fuck with Linux. Period. Yeah. Done. We literally you know just come out and say, look, we really don't like Linux, so we don't want to support it in right. any way, shape, or form. Okay. Yeah, and then we can. Right. You know what? That's cool. Next. Right. Yeah. We, we, so, we'll, we'll go bark up a different tree. So. Something that's been working on Linux for a long time, like five Party years of time. <laughs> yeah, no, five years since the last update. It, it was out three years before then. Uh, it's Crypt of the Negro Dancer. Yes, it, it, it's had an update after 1,721 days, according to them. Uh, it's, uh, it's finally got an update. Uh, they've been gathering, well... They claim that they were looking at the feedback and people have been complaining about loading times and the difficulty spike after a few levels and the custom music so you can add your own to the game and the controller support and other inputs that basically effectively did not work outside of X inputs or a Steam input because that just emulates X input. So they're now uh, effectively... Uh, well, they were going to release this update, version 3.0.0, as a preparation for the next big update. And with this one, the, the one that jumped out to me immediately was updated controller and Steam Deck support. And there you go. The deck is now bringing that games back to life. Very good. <laughs> well, I mean, it's effectively... You, you gotta make a really weird decision when you're like, I don't like money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. But you know, it has that benefit. You know, like you gotta bring her oh, up to her too. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna continue seeing the um Yeah, I mean benefits. it's it's a it's a big ass update. It's, it it's huge. I yeah, get tired uh, of yep. watching it scroll. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, th I think maybe maybe their new game is using the same base as this. So yeah, go, going and fixing up stuff probably uh, saves them a bunch of effort and heartbreak in the future. Also, uh, the minimum Linux system requirements got bumped up to uh, Ubuntu 18.04. So uh, oh, if you're no. still using uh, 16.04 or if you're still on 12.04, keep, keep, <laughs> keep, keep rocking on. I, I'm proud of you, man. Keep Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Your champ. Well, there was an Your update champ. for twelve oh four released not too long ago. There was like this massive um, vulnerability that they discovered. So technically, yeah. still supported. <laughs> Why would I need to do updates and something that old? I mean, it's just a uh, nginx or a ten year uh, ten year support uh, twenty twenty two. That ends this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> Can, can, listen, Canonical's going to send you some ugly messages on LinkedIn for bringing that up. <laughs> Coming up next, uh, there is some there's there's some problems in Unity Land. We're going to talk about and the death of X question mark. Dun dun dun. I don't know. I, I was promised wet strings, and my mind went places. But uh, if your mind has not gone places, and you would like to let us know. Well, uh, where exactly it is at this very moment, uh, you can do that uh, in a multitude of different ways, but that's for the hate mail. Right now, it's the news. It's about this point. Like, <laughs> damn it, wrong it's, it's, not, it's, it's not the news, Pedro. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? It, it's the time before the news. It's, the, it's that wonderful juncture where uh, I, I try to make some sort of joke and fail to come up with one, and then transition to talking about Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where, uh, where you can subscribe. Professional. Yeah. Move. Where, yeah. Is what's true. I didn't Indeed. forget about two segments. No. What are you talking no, about? No. Not at all. Uh, but sign up for our Patreon. You get some cool stuff. You can not get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Join in there. You get some cool stuff. You can hang out with Ven and I on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays 
for live streams. Uh, if you want to play some Trackmania with Ven on Tuesdays and Fridays, yeah, that's the way to get in. Uh, you get access to the pre-pre-super shows, and if you're an executive producer, you get a special video feed for that. You get a special RSS feed for that. You can even talk. You can even talk to us for an hour before we go live. I don't know why you'd want to do that. but I don't know. Again. Sometimes you can accidentally leave your mic on. Sometimes. Yeah. Send send yeah. us cryptic like Russian number signals, number station signals. <laughs> like boop, 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 boop. Oh, we uh, do thank you for that. Uh, a couple other things that we got bouncing around at Jordan, like our store. Yeah, we do have a store. Oh, uh, uh, we we do got to thank uh, System T first oh, before right. we talk about that. Uh, System T, uh. awesome Patreon, <laughs> increase the pledge. Good stuff. But yeah, we do have a store, store.linuxgamecast.com, where you can buy some t-shirts, you can buy some coffee cups, you can buy some stickers. Um, I think that's it. That's all That's all we sell. Maybe hoodies. Uh, uh, let's see. We got t-shirts, long t-shirts, cups that are not t-shirts, stickers that are not t-shirts. What, what, yeah. is, the, what is the cup if not a t-shirt for your coffee, if you really think about it? I don't know. I just like having Hell Hawks <laughs> merchandise everywhere because it takes so long to not explain to people and walk off and leave me in confusion. Yeah, yeah, just like explain about the man is. Yeah, um, but we, uh, if you want to buy us some stuff instead, we have wishlist. You can head on over to linuxgamecast.com, mouse over the support button. I have one. Oh, the fucking fog machine didn't show up. Damn it. I added that. <laughs> I added that. This is, okay, there we go. Just, there we go. Buy, just buy because me I, fog I would never fucking hear the end of this. There. <laughs> yes. Buy me, buy me a fog machine. Buy Ven some shit for the studio. You can get why, your name. Why should I buy anything of this fucking wish? Though it's not like I can inflict damage and or embarrassment on any of us with it. No, not 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 <laughs> not at all. Um, no. You, <laughs> power tools, files. No, no, you can't do any damage with that. No, sir. <laughs> none, none at all. I mean, you, you could probably do some damage with the Ladies 5600G gentlemen. if you like corner someone with it. If you throw them, at, throw it at their head. I was just fucking with you. You can't do the embarrassment and damage because you can send in a note that we Ooh. promise to read. Long as it's like not like hard in C seventeen. <laughs> Nothing that'll get can't us get us off banned Twitch. off Twitch and can't uh, uh, send us to jail. The, the, like the two requirements, pretty <laughs> fucking lax, if you ask me. Uh, and we got to do that. If you get anything for the studio, you end up on the Blinkatron board nine thousand. Because I always thought those were cheesy, and I finally got one of my own. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fine upstanding cannibals, them all. What do we got for news this week? Are we done with the blogging? Are we done with the I shilling? Think, Thank I you for think support. we're done. One of the biggest things you can do, share the show, retweet, uh, whatever you do on the Facebooks. Flying Spaghetti Monster, help us if we're on TikTok somehow. TikTok, block, I don't know. Tip, tip top, if we are, it's probably an official. Mm. So, so, all right. So then, none of us are getting fired, right? So what are we talking about next? Um, <laughs> None of us are getting fired, right? I promise. None, never. I don't even like joking about this, man, because this sucks for people. Uh, Unity is laying off hundreds of employees. And what stings with this, yeah, it was just last week that the CEO told the employees, hey, man, there's not going to be any layoffs. To which a lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot of people, there's definitely more than one person went, I can finally buy a thing now. I don't have to worry about it. I can go buy that Steam Deck. Right. right. And I'm like, fuck, really? And so the company confirmed uh, to Protocol. That's where this is coming. It's going to be in our show notes after the fact. Uh, letting Teamcast.com. They're going to be laying off around 4% of the staff. Employees will be receiving severance pay. So that's good, as well as 30 days to find a job internally, which the scuttlebutt around that is like, yeah, we're under a hiring freeze right now. So that doesn't really mean much. But hey, at least it's there. Now, last year, Unity, they bought Weta, that Weta, if you're into the FX and all that, um, founded by Peter Jackson. You know, they did Avatar, Lord of the Rings. Of the Rings. Of the Rings. Yeah, mm -hmm. for $1.62 billion, but they're trying to play catch up. They are. They want to be the catch up to Unreal Engine 5's mustard, you know, which you see Unreal Engine 5 being used a shitload in productions with its virtual set technology used on Mandalorian and places like that. No. Yeah, this is that just sucks, man. There's nothing yeah, like yeah. that. No warning, nothing. You just get, hey, you need to call in to whoever your manager is. Like, yeah, bye. Yeah. According to some of the staffers, uh, anywhere from like three to four hundred people have been given the axe. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's not fun. A bunch of the cuts are coming out of the AI and engineering departments. Um, yeah, like Ben was saying, it seems like they were trying real hard to diversify because 
Uh, the Kotaku article that was linked in the protocol article also brings up the fact that, you know, uh, Epic has multiple revenue streams. They have Fortnite, they have, uh, they have Unreal Engine and they have like, um, they have EAC. They have other, they have other things that they're selling. Unity did not really have that. So they went after Parsec to try and get some networking tech. They went after Weta to try and get some industry contacts in Hollywood and, Either they're having a very hard time competing or at least securing that, you know, sweet, sweet, infinite growth that shareholders and board members seem to believe is actually possible. Um, I don't know. It's it's really fucking shady, though, especially because they said, like, yeah, we're not going to fire everyone next week. You're all fired. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, some, that's a Zap Brannigan move, man. And, and the... The, the the annoying bit is that, okay, if Unity goes away, what's the other big engine that, you know, is freely available for Godot. people to use there is Godot, but like if the big Dunk. 3d ones the big 3d ones it's a real blender <laughs> i remember that game from the blender mm-hmm. game engine <laughs> the one my brain's Sin- trying Sindel? to block it yeah. Sin- Sintel, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh yeah no it's and i i don't like giving epic that much power of being the default uh, engine. So. You gotta come back. You gotta throw the love. It doesn't matter what you feels, but I mean, some of the first games we've gotten in the second coming of Linux gaming were from Unity. Unity put that <laughs> Linux export in there. Even before we were fully aware of it, we just started getting contact. I'm like, what? That's available? McDroid, right? I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. That's a Unity title. How did... The um, Slenderman one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they've been good. They keep up with Linux stuff, uh, but about equally as Unreal Engine does with theirs, but you know everybody's they made some questionable Vulcan. decisions. But you know, it yeah. is what it is. Hundred percent. No, again, that sucks for anybody to get laid off. Nothing but feels for that, especially yeah. like after just that hits me the wrong way of saying there will not be any layoffs because that's either just being shady as fuck or there's some serious, serious communication issues well, in management. Well, and and that, and that's part of what the article was speculating at as well, because people inside Unity were saying that there's been a lot of like repivots and whatnot. So it mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't seem like the the management has a firm grasp of what they actually need to do. Um, hence, you know, well, we we got we got we got we got to make money from somewhere. Let's fire a bunch of people <laughs> who are doing work instead of us who are doing nothing. But Works none of the time, hundred percent of the time. No, yep. XFCE. I'm going to bring that up, but Jordan is going to tell you a story about Wayland. Yeah, so this is pretty neat. Um, so uh, there have been a number of uh, merge requests coming in from Oliver Fourdain and Co. And co uh, for uh, X Wayland, uh, specifically to improve its functionality in rootful mode. Because as it turns out, when you want to run an application that is fairly wide ranging, like say a desktop environment, you need to be running as with a lot more permissions than say the default Wayland security model will allow you as a regular ass user. So, um, yeah, uh, there, there's a merge request now going into X Wayland. They now have support for running full desktop environments within X Wayland. This potentially means that we will be able to ship, um, stuff like XFCE, uh, or other other X specific uh, desktop environments without having to actually ship X because X Wayland will have the capability to run that. Um, a lot of this has to do with um, uh, having support for faking uh, device and cursor grab for full screen applications, desktop integration for setting arbitrary resolutions, um, the ability to spe- specify fixed geometry instead of having Wayland grab the available area of all monitors and glob it together. Um, some host grab support so that you can like, you know, if you've, if you've ever used like virtual box, that thing where you hit control alt and then your, your cursor gets freed, that's necessarily necessary to implement. And, uh, the ability for the compositor to actually kill the main, uh, Wayland window as well. So you can actually shut down your session. Needless to say, this is a lot of work going into, uh, may- maybe actually, you know, getting to that post X future that we've been dreaming about for so many years. It's yeah. going to be a step. But I'm not sure how I feel about the step because I can see people leveraging that to not continue development the correct way, which is heading to Wayland. Because it was brought up like desktops like XFCE and Mate. I can't speak for Mate, but you know, like XFCE getting Wayland like 10 years away. And I'm like, optimism. Uh, <laughs> but I can see what little work has been done with XFCE to like getting a serious focus on Wayland and dealing with it. Going, oh, I don't fucking worry about that now. We'll just make this thing work. And I, you know what? Here's the thing. I think people like me 
who are running Active C, we're not using it because of features or looks or anything like that. We're running it because that shit's stable. It's just there. It works. It doesn't crash. It's very lightweight. And I'm not, all those things are not compatible with like running it through something else. You know, if I'm going to be using Wayland, I'm going to find whatever the next XFCE like window manager or what is, what, what is the correct terminology with Wayland desktop or window manager? Yeah, d- d- desktop, desktop environment. Yeah. De- <laughs> yeah. It's going to be Wayland, you know, it's going to be XFCE like because, you know, even things like enlightenment are up and running on that. So, yeah. And, 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 and this, this, oh, God. It's more the, uh, like, because there's a lot of functionality that Axe has, which is provided by certain specific tools, stuff like Xset and everything that that exposes, and a few other, like XRender, for example, for uh, just setting the resolution on the fly. All that stuff is not really available in Waylon. So uh, it would be very, very nice to actually be able to have all of that just there. And if this helps bridge that particular gap, that'd be very nice. Mm-hmm. And well, it's, it's for the desktop when, user, for the desktop user, this is nothing but win. Mm-hmm. Nothing but win. Absolutely, absolutely. And and this this is this is a crucial bit of bridge technology that, like you said, there there are a lot of slow moving projects that aren't going to necessarily get on Wayland. And like because because like this is this is an implementation of X server within Wayland. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I I can't speak for certain because I haven't used XFCE in it. But like I'm I'm I think there's going to be less of a performance hit. Uh, than we think, but yeah, it, like to Pedro's point, it's going to be a matter of implementing all of those X-like features in this rootful mode. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's going outside of Wayland's intended use case, but unfortunately, because of I'm going to bl- I'm going to throw a canonical under the bus for this one, but because of canonical, uh, <laughs> we 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 kind of kind of stalled on that Wayland development of getting shit moved over. So yeah, the, 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 these sorts of technologies. I think the biggest thing to blame for Wayland is Wayland so far. <laughs> I, just, I have, th- there have always been things around Wayland. It was the canonical thing. It was the Nvidia thing. It, mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I look forward to it. And again, like once it becomes viable for me to switch over to Wayland, uh, desktop stuff mostly there. I'm not going to be running what I'm just saying, like code path stuff like that. On top of that, I'm going to be running the leanest, meanest thing it is, and I guarantee you, it's not going to be running through um this in any way, shape, or fashion. So. Wine has an announcement about something. Yes, the new version, the new development version 7.12 is available. And uh, with the new version, you get uh, theming support for Qt5 applications. The Windows Qt5 applications, I know. What the hell is Quart? Uh, I have no... Uh, a qualified word. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a data type in the registry. Word. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. Uh, yeah. It's a registry. It's, thing. Al- it's also where Sinestro got his ring from. The yellow power ring. Not, not the. Green <laughs> I one. thought it was like some <laughs> Easter egg version of a Quap qu- and like Regex or something. But, I, yeah. but this yeah, is, it's no, the, the sequel big, to Quap Quar. <laughs> the big. Uh, the big one with this release seems to be the update of the bundled VKD 3D which is now uh, upgraded to version 1.4 uh they've uh they've also fixed a couple of uh crashes in Star Citizen uh or well uh, a crash and a bug there was no mic input audio so you can actually uh use your tin can to shout at other people in Star Citizen uh and the uh launcher crash on start with a wind mm error that's been fixed too. So yeah, if you were uh, trying to get your star citizen on and you were having issues like that, you might want to give seven twelve a try, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a pretty tiny release, but like, yeah. you know, th- that, that's, that's kind of a good thing when it comes with wine. It's like, Hey, we don't got much to, f- we're just fixing shit. We're not going to, we're not doing anything revolutionary. Just, yeah. I love stuff it, like that. And yeah. I love to see fixes for stuff. Like I didn't even know what that, like the quad, the yeah. cord. Yeah whatever like that is probably going to affect something else later on down the world i mean just uh better and better technology now something you absolutely have never needed one to run is zonotic zonotic yeah that's the game that nobody knows how to pronounce because it's a weird ass word but they got a new release out it's not eight five uh you can update it from the in-game menu or you can download it from the website if you're so inclined but it has a couple new things uh they've uh added a dedicated dueling mode now if you want to do 1v1 uh they've also um uh rebalanced a freeze tag a little bit uh bots the default skill level is now eight instead of one so someone is going to click through that 
And they're going to be in for a rude awakening as these bots start kicking their asses. Uh, that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, and I guess the other thing is that they got uh, Quake 3 map compatibility, which is pretty neat. They have a Dark Places implementation uh, as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's, I guess, more 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 maps for, for Zenotic. That's always good. Well, I mean, it's come a long way. Right? <laughs> right. Like, something you might stand a chance on was muscle memory, right? And, right. Um, yeah, the Q3 map compatibility is pretty big. And several of the official maps, they've been updated. Um, so old clients uh, will have issues to run these maps. You know, if you try to run them on a custom server. So make sure you get everything updated. And I mean, yeah, look at it. I mean, it, it's basic. Like Quake always has been, son. And yeah, it is Zenotic. It looks a bit prettier, uh, or maybe I just never really bother to actually go into yeah, the Yeah, I don't settings. remember it looking this good. I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really... Well, they, they, they've been working on the lighting. Like, that was the that was the uh, the thing with their past couple of releases. Of, they've been doing a big uh, graphical overhaul. So, yeah, it's looking good. Isn't this it, the it one uh, <laughs> Buildzoid plays? Might not be. Because I... Uh, you know the kid that... Yes, uh, I know he plays uh, Need for Speed World. Uh, but... Uh, I I don't know what, which of the FPS is. He is always playing, it, and I'll tune in. But I need background. But it's also it's like some obscure first person shooter. You know the type that probably play. You know because like this is all we play, man. You know hardcore, which I can respect. Uh, it's been around for a long time. I'm glad to mm-hmm. see it is still got plenty of community involvement, and people are still prior art. Not as long as Simutrans. Yeah, Oof. 25 years of uh, Simutrans. It is... 25 years is a, a significant um, amount of time, no matter what you're doing. And, it's old enough and, to rent a car. Yeah, and if you're developing a video game... I don't know. And you, you, see, you know, you just... You fucked up right <laughs> off the bat. Don't get out. Nothing good comes from graph paper. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Game design, like very, very <laughs> elementary game design. Apparently, uh, that was the start of Simutrans 25 years ago. And they have a little uh, interactive timeline that you can click on. And, I um, want to eat that train. <laughs> just see um, exactly when it started, like when the original uh, creator did that little sketch, and when he started developing, and when all the team members joined, and the leadership uh, changed from... Uh, Hensjog Maltaner, uh, Hajo, uh, which was the original one to moved over to Marcus Pristefek, Pristasek, uh, something like that. Prissy <laughs> uh, is the current one, uh, and yeah, it is. It it it's actually very very nice to see like development as it went along. It's um, yeah, very they nice. they, uh, <laughs> they they went open source in two thousand seven, got put in the Debian repos in two thousand eight, and they've been rocking ah. and rolling since. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. no, don't use the scroll wheel. <laughs> don't scroll. <laughs> Whatever. Do what I want. Zoom in it, hands. <laughs> hands. Do what I want. Fire oh, phasers. I, I broke it. Oh. Well, you have you have successfully derailed this conversation, Damn haven't it. you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna derail this segment. Coming up next, it's time for some creepy card games. Yay! Welcome back to Cult 45. No, this isn't a cult. This is the Chairquisition. And we're taking a look at a very, very creepy game this week. This is Inscriptions by Daniel Mullins, who was kind enough, kind enough to send us some keys. So thanks a bunch, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, yeah, uh, it's done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks US. It was actually on sale this week uh, for, what, 15 bucks? Uh, the Inscription is an inky black card-based odyssey that blends the deck-building roguelike escape room-style puzzles and psychological horror into a blood lace smoothie. Darker st- still are the areas or are the secrets inscribed on the cards. Uh, so, the Chairquisition, for those of you who don't know, it's where we take a game. That's run it where that on, damn key went. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. We, 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 yeah take, we take a game, run it on three different Linux distributions. We have three different sets of hardware now. We're all uh, running Ryzen and NVIDIA for once, so... Oh, we're all running Ryzen CPUs, but different generations now. It's all good. The point is, setup's very different, so you get three different views um, and three different scores based on lawn chairs. Mm, one one me. means that it's shit, four means that it's great. So I get to go first this time, which is very rare. Um, so yeah, uh, on Fedora, 30... Oh, whoopsie, whoopsie, that's not my score. 
There we go. That's not why. That's not my score at all. Uh, we got to do it in uh, three minutes or less too. Uh, so on Fedora 3564, the R9 3900 X that I plugged into this box again for the upteenth time, and the GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, yeah, launches out of the box, holds 68 UHD. Controls are point and click with some light wasding for the escape room segments. Um, Card stats are power and health. Monsters have costs enumerated on them, and without spoiling too much, there are a few different ways you can summon monsters. I'll let you discover that on your own. You also get some single-use items to help you out if you're not if you feel like you're not using your teeth for much. Um, so yeah, uh, so the soundtrack is very good. It's very creepy. Uh, the visual style is very is highly stylized. Um, again, can't go too deep into it with spoilers, but it's very well done in all phases of the game. Big fan of it. Uh, fun wise. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the design philosophy here, which is here's a basic little card game that you can play against the computer. Now that you understand the rules, go break the fuck out of it and, and cheese you must if you really want to survive. Um, an example of this was my first soul card, uh, Pinchy Fucker, with a one cost, four power and the Mantis Fork ability. If I played him on turn one, you would just win any fight, which is great. Um, although the bosses have guards against that. If you have too cheesy a combo and you just like one shot them, they'll be like, ah, here, have a bunch of OP monsters to fight because fuck you. This is what you get for trying to outsmart me. Um, yeah. Uh, there's also, there's also ways to uh, modify your running cards using totems. Uh, stinky squirrels was a favorite strategy of mine until I discovered the infinite squirrel. Uh, then my hand got a little too big. Um, so full disclosure, I'm a dirty cheater. I watched Jesse Cox play through this entire game last year, <laughs> and I'm aware of all of the spoilery stuff that happens. Suffice to say, though, the plot is fantastic. It's weird. And the game within the game is pretty wacky. And if you're interested in the alternate reality game that results in the end, you can look up the write up. It's easily Googleable enough and you can learn about Hitler's Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I'm only half joking about that. But honestly, even if you're spoiled for even if you're spoiled for the plot, I gotta say it doesn't fucking matter. The card games are just too good. It feels great to create these massively overpowered combos and just blow through opponents. And once the main campaign is done, I highly recommend you you check out uh, Casey's mod, which basically just gives you an extended adventure mode uh, for the first chapter of the game, which is really really cool. I'm a giant fan of this game. I will fanboy over it if I didn't have a time limit on myself. So I'm going to say four chairs. Get this game. It's fucking great. Don't even have four chairs loaded, man. You're going to have to do it with like <laughs> oh, get, <laughs> plus three plus one. one. <laughs> check, check nope out. Indeed. Can I, can I, there we go. Four. Uh, four. <laughs> stay we tuned for next week. We did, when we did I it. Reddit. That I did that. <laughs> what, what about you, Pedro? Yeah, uh, I, I, I too liked it, but uh, I'll get to that. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GT... No, not the GTX 1080. Now it's the RX 6700 XT. Uh, it launched out of the box. Uh, there was no V-Sync option that I could find. So the FURPs on the desktop were all over the place. Uh, anywhere between 180-something FPS to 400-something FPS. Away we go. Uh, on the deck, though, it actually respected the refresh rate that you have set. But that's because Valve made it so that the game launches out of the box with Proton. That's why that's happening, isn't it? Right. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it, it the outside of the small technical snafu, uh, it does like the visuals and the music. They create a very creepy atmosphere. Uh, it is uh, it, like everything is exaggerated and a little bit stilted. It, it's the good kind of creepy. Uh, and well, uh, speaking of you know the creepy stuff, uh, Pony Island, previous game uh, by Daniel Mullins, I didn't really like. I I I mean I don't like. The fourth wall breaking in video games, I tend to lose interest if the game starts to do it in a ham-fisted way. Uh, Undertale comes to mind, and even Super Hot, if you want an example of doing especially bad. Super Hot's a pretty good one for that. Uh, inscription, however, thus far has shown very little sign of such fourth wall breakery. And it that's good, because I'm basically playing the creepy Slate Aspire uh, game, and I fucking love it. I do. I really do. There's other stuff going on. Absolutely. There's the escape room uh, type of situation where you can, you unlock things while playing the cards uh, or the, some of the cards talk to you and tell you where to go get things. There's absolutely more here than meets the eye at first glance, but what I've played of it so far, much like Jordan, I really like. There's a lot to uncover, and I will probably uh, have to play a heck of a lot more. But yeah, no, the uh, technical 
cockapery. That I cannot forgive, so three chairs. <laughs> All right, let me get... I have three loaded. Do I? Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. So what everyone's been waiting for, what does somebody who's <laughs> not a huge fan of deck building games have to say about this? <laughs> Is it going to sell them? Well, let me try to tell you. First, let's start. How does it run on Debian 11? With my NVIDIA 3060, 32 gigs RAM, 1920X, it launched out of the box, windowed in full screen with the resolution options. Good to see. It's OpenGL powered instead of Vulkan. That's kind of retro, kind of neat. Getting somewhere between 90 and 100 FERPs at UHD. No option for limiting frame rate, so the GPU is always just maxed out for fuck all reasons. Can't do anything about that. So, hope you like being warm. Now, Unless the menu plays into the game later on, I really think it should be nominated for like unnecessary bullshit award for having to click on the thing and dragging it over there to select an option. And you can't it does. rebind controls, which sucks. We talked about that in the pre-pre super season. Is you know, it, it's some extra nonsense. It's I could I kept caught myself thinking about the deck, you know, because this is not my jam, but I'm trying to learn, I'm absorbing this. Leaning back, thinking, you know, clicking the cards, moving stuff around. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. But then I got to lean forward or bring a keyboard into the relationship to tap W and S. And yeah, I know there's like some movement stuff, but I'll get to that in a minute. As far as the fun, if you enjoy killing squirrels, this is your game. You're going to love it. Uh, first act, open strong for a card game. I don't get to say that very often. Usually it's like, that's oh, a card game I'm going to play through. I'm like, oh, I've got interest in this. You get your cards, you get pliers, you get bones, you get fans, you get bottles. And, well, you kind of do the typical card game thing. Granted, one of the cards gives you hints, and that was kind of neat. It started talking to me. Then the other one did the stink bug. Uh, I think you saw that in Pedro's video. You can get up and walk around the cabin, but it's like missed hypercard movement from back in the day, which is serviceable to explore some things. Now I know where the key goes. Uh, spoilers. Unfortunately, like the story to card game ratio kind of fell out of whack for me at around the 50 minute mark. And then again, you got to consider, I only showed up for the like ZOMG Pony Island flavored shenanigans. That's what I was here for. And I was expecting like bizarre brain scratching indie horror nonsense in the guise of a deck builder. Now, Inscription is a card game at its heart. Card game first. So you best like that. I strongly suggest, if you're thinking about it, just like, mm, fuck mothering demo, son. Go download it. See if you like the card mechanic, how that plays. If you like Pedro, if you like Jordan, and it's your jam, you're probably going to have a great time with all the bonus soda fuckery on top of it. If you don't really like the card deck building type things, uh download the demo see if you can power your way through it so yeah i'll say two chairs on that nothing negative about the game itself gentlemen outside of just not being my jam it came close i i think maybe my expectations were a little too high because it did open strong with presentation <clears throat> well like getting me in the mindset to play through this yeah and uh to, to, your, to your point about the menu yeah the menu does kind of factor into the story later on so yes. there, 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 there is some stuff about that, but yeah, um, you, you, re, you, re, it, this is a game you really do need to dig into a little bit to like, uh, to, uh, to, to really get like the most joy out of. So if, if, if you're just looking for something a little more surface level, I mean, I think you could still enjoy it if you're still into card games, but yeah, I think you could like card games a little more like Pony Island. I enjoyed playing through. I did, you know, that was thinly guys. This is an arcade game. And I was expecting more of that. I, but according to you guys, like the card mechanics in this, everything's very enjoyable and very good. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And it's just for Indeed. that right type of person. Indeed. Uh, it is Andrew, you, very, you yeah, no, it is very, uh, like the, the, the card game itself is very similar to Slight Aspire. So if you like that game and you don't mind the creepy atmosphere, heck, maybe you're like me and you actually enjoy it. It's worth a, sh a shot. It's definitely a solid check it out. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I've, I I want to talk more about it, but there's so many spoilers. <laughs> Coming up next, voicemail? I may have gotten a little bit ahead of myself earlier. I don't apologize. In fact, I may even make that a thing and make oh, it worse no, look next at the week. Emoji. It's like a little <laughs> wizard strapped down in his hat. Yeah, no, that I thought, wizard. I thought that was uh, like a wizard doobie. <laughs> 
Yeah, it it is uh, Wizard Doobie. Uh, the um, yeah, the best way to get in touch with us uh, if you the do smoke have Wizard Doobie. Yes, if you'd like to tell us the tale of that time you smoked a wizard doobie, uh, you can go to linksgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, and there's a form you gotta fill, some caveats you gotta read at the top. But, and as uh, tonight you will be made aware of, you can also leave us a voicemail on Spotify. The whole contact place. page. <laughs> there you go. Just read the things, developers, crowdfunding campaigns. Reading is hard, man. <laughs> Come on our show. Make sure you select the right thing, and uh, yeah. Weekly, LGC daily Wednesday. weekly, yeah. Let's yeah. Talk. Or, you want to come you on the show? Send some feedback for Wednesday. Yeah, I, uh, is that is that Gandalf Lundgren? Cheech and Gandalf. That's my new show. <laughs> Comedy buddy duo. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's, play, who's playing Gandalf? Is, is it still Ian McKellen? No, 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 no. <laughs> See, that's where a lot of people are like, um, you got to pick the right Gandalf, and I'm 100 percent behind him on that, man. You know, you you just can't hand out Gandalf willy nilly, man. I, I still want to see Christopher Lee as Gandalf. I know that's not going to happen because he's still sleeping in his coffin for another thousand years. But my Gandalf want... is the obvious choice. Mike Judge. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Hank, Hank Hill Gandalf. I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can, I'll tell you what. Right. Bobby. 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 Bobby, give me the ring. <laughs> Dang it, Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> and he can just keep doing it. He'd be like possessed, Gandalf. Uh, I need keeping for my manghorn. Right. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so if you want to send us a message, you can leave a voicemail at uh, in the Spotify app. Allegedly, I'm pretty sure that's there. If you want to do it on the web, anchor, go to the page, click the message, and uh, we will get it again, allegedly, because we haven't heard this one. And this came from, damn it. Hang on. Maybe they say who. <laughs> <laughs> Let's professionals let's, let's professionals listen. so the reason people might not be leaving you guys messages is it's kind of a pain in the butt you can't actually click on click on the uh, https link there's not a button you kind of have to open a browser tab and type it all in uh that's at least from the the linux client i didn't try in the web browser but i just figured that i would actually say something about it and uh you know just let y'all know what's up by the way, this is Romeo Sid Vicious. There we go. Yay. <laughs> so, maybe, th- thank you for including that so that I didn't yeah. have to get. My first guess was Pennywise, actually, but, you know. Yeah, the same low tone of voice. Eh. Yeah, same, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yes, please, everyone from now on, if you're going to use that. Yeah, from the Linux client, uh, maybe not. It is available in the app, which I do know. Um, I've never tried to. I tried to send one to myself, and it pops up a window. I was like, "You can't send one to yourself, silly. Quit doing that." Stop, nice try. Quit trying to talk to yourself, you <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> you have no friends. But yeah, send us in something creative. We'd love to actually hear from you. So that yeah. is a thing we can do, and we can play it on this very show. Is that it? Or did we do a good? Oh, and I, again, include, please. I'm old and forgetful. I was like, damn it. <laughs> it is going to take like, I was going to have to give Jordan and Pedro. I was like, you need to fill about 45 to 50 seconds. Well, well, while you the find email. the email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but not tonight. Not tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, on that bombshell, we got to cue the music. As always, get a hold of me on Twitter. I'm there bouncing around, dropping things, shit posting, trying to be insightful on the rare occasion. At Vin Stone, that's where I'm at. Or just at Vin, if you want to do the Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Thanks to each and every one of you who've reported like spammers and stuff on our Mastodon instance. I love dropping that ban hammer. <laughs> I'm trapped. I'm trapped in the Linux Spotify client and I don't know how to get out. Free me by going to Twitter and following me at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Uh... And I'm. Well, I, I suppose I'm on Twitter. I was going to say I was in uh, none of those places, but I am technically on Twitter. And I do have a Twitch account, but I don't really use it for anything lately. Uh, I haven't really had the time, but if you'd like to follow me on Twitter uh, and shout at me, I will shout right back at you. It's he at was an account too busy at posting pictures of his um, computer on Twitter. Yes, my computer and Nori's computer. That's what I did yesterday afternoon and this morning, effectively. And then you took a nap? <laughs> that was the only yeah. thing you did? 
<laughs> I've been doing chores around the house. That, that that that's like my weekends now is doing the chores. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Credit time. Yeah. <laughs> Jill's not here. What are you talking about? I suppose I'm the old engine of giggling destruction. Let's look at these credits, which take like fucking 15 minutes to render. Goddamn. Um. Yeah, man. All right. Well, we got to thank our advisors, Omegas and Artharin, and our executive producers. Who are they? They're scrolling up very slowly. They're our Bram Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaz Unoid, and Lee Adama. And our Chicago kicks ass tier, Darkwing and Abstraction. Sea Monsters coming to you with Renault, Ryder X Mach, and a truck you've ever seen it at Justin Frostclaw, Numbin David, and now System T. With the Death Notes, uh, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, Craig H, Renee, Leonardo. Thanks, thanks for calling us, Krizzy, Romeo. Kim. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, I need to bump up System <laughs> T, Lee, by the Chris. way. Ha. All right, see yes. Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Game of Tron, Dodger, uh, Dirty Dean, Beck, Xanthorus Gaming, Rue, Turnover. Uh, cheesy bacon, Kaiju Ray. Er, I can't read. <laughs> Uncheesy bacon. Did, did, did you just, a few did you just more make there. a tire squeal noise? Did you just like fail to turn? <laughs> yes. <laughs> look, look, look at All these the fine fuckers. upstanding cannibals. <laughs> Coming through with Carl, Mike, Arthur, here in Linux New Aldi is Noctilus, Johnny Shep, and Game of Tron. Thank You're you, Mike. You're all truly, Thank truly you. wonderful. You're all I'm, truly, truly fucked. Mike, a little is, crazy, but no, I just want to give Mike. Wonderful. I want to give Mike a shout out because he <laughs> says this at the. He lies to us at the, every week and makes me feel good because I believe lies. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> that was a great show. I, I just Mike don't G take is an enabler. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Bye. -bye. We rely on your enablability. New word. Bye. Don't look it up. Enableability. <laughs> yes. Five dudes.